Hi, it's Lee from the Japanese Wood Gardens. In this video, I'm going to be explaining everything you should know about UV clarifiers. What are they? What do they do? Do they need any maintenance? Let me answer these questions and expose a few myths about UVs. Back in the early days of pond keeping, some clever soul, not sure who it was, made a fantastic discovery that changed ornamental ponds forever. Ultraviolet light is damaging to single-celled green algae, a common cause of murky water in ponds. Zap the algae with powerful UV rays and irreparable damage is inflicted onto the DNA. Yes, exactly the same process that can cause skin cancer and makes you look like a prune by the time you're 50. Once the DNA of the algae is damaged, it tends to form heavy clumps that sink to the bottom of the pond or get trapped in the filter media and then die. So long as you're killing off the algae faster than it's multiplying, the water becomes crystal clear and you can see your lovely fish. UVs are rated in watts. Watts are a measure of electrical power consumption. As a general rule of thumb, I would suggest that you allow at least 10 watts of power for every thousand gallons, or 5,000 liters of pond water. In my experience, there isn't much to choose between UV brands. You can spend hundreds of pounds of your hard earned money on a shiny looking stainless steel UV, but I'm skeptical about any benefits that there are to be had from such a unit. Try to buy a unit that uses standard, non-proprietary generic spares as they will save you a lot of money. Most UVs will come supplied with universal hose tails to enable easy installation onto flexible hose. To connect to a solvent weld pipe system, you'll probably need to purchase a pair of suitable, inexpensive adapters. It doesn't make much difference where the UV is installed. It can go before or after the filter. It will work equally well. Does the flow rate make much difference? I don't believe that it does, but you certainly should not be running a hugely powerful pump through a tiny little UV, as this could restrict your flow or even blow out the rubber seals and cause a leak. Along with your biofilter, the UV will need to be powered up and running 24 hours a day, but it should not be in operation at any time when your pump is off, otherwise the lamp can get hot and cause a scorch on the inside of the quartz sleeve. After about 6 months of operation, the lamp will need to be replaced. Even though the lamp may appear to be illuminating, the visible light that you see is not UV light. When you service your unit, take care not to damage the delicate quartz sleeves and don't expose your eyes to the lamp as it can be harmful. UV lights have no effect on blanket weed, the stringy algae that grows on the side of your pond. To eradicate blanket weed, you will need to use a separate treatment such as cloverleaf blanket answer. Check out my best blanket weed treatment for more information on that amazing product. Sometimes UVs are described as sterilizers, suggesting that they will eliminate parasites and bacteria. Whilst it is true to say that UV light is harmful to parasites and bacteria, the power output from a domestic unit will be nowhere near sufficient to have any appreciable benefit. It is a common practice to turn off the UV during a pond treatment whilst establishing a new filter or after adding living bacteria. Do you really need to do this? Maybe, maybe not. The UV itself does not guarantee clear water. To achieve this, you still need an efficient mechanical filter. But there is absolutely no doubt that the UV light is an extremely useful piece of equipment that every pond keeper should have. Without a UV, maintaining clear water will be all but impossible. I hope that you found this video of interest. If you would like to see more, then please subscribe to the channel. Click that bell thing and leave any questions in the comments below. It's bye for now from Lee at the Japanese Water Gardens.